Numerical Computation, Chapter 7, Additional Video Number 2. You can view this video after you complete the Additional Video Number 1. In this video, we discuss Newton's method for nonlinear systems. Consider now a function f, which is a vector-valued function of several variables. And then one has the Newton iteration. The formula looks like this. Given the initial guess x0, one performs the iteration. xk plus 1 as a vector equals xk vector minus df at xk inverse times the f at xk. Here, the df is the Jacobi matrix of the function f. And here we are taking the inverse of the matrix. We see that this is a direct extension of the method for a single equation where we replace the derivative by the Jacobian matrix and uh, the division of that um, derivative is replaced by the inverse of the matrix. But due to the fact that this is a vector, then at every iteration one actually have to solve a system of linear equations. Furthermore, one must have the Jacobi matrix, which contains all the partial derivatives of the f with respect to each x. All of these would make this a very expensive method to compute. So very often, the Jacobian matrix is not easy to find. A common practice is that when you find the difference to approximate the derivatives, the partial derivatives, and form the Jacobian matrix. For example, the partial derivatives of fi with respect to xj evaluated at the x could be approximated by taking one little step in the xj component and then subtract the difference of the value of this fi here and then divide it by h. So that will be a one-sided final difference. One also can use central final difference, probably is a higher order one. So you take a step positive step in the xj, and you take a negative step in the xj, and you evaluate the function at those two points, and you subtract them, and the difference is divided by 2h. Okay, so here h is a small value. For the Newton iteration for systems, we have the following local convergence result under some assumptions. Okay, so it says that if the Jacobian matrix df is invertible in a neighborhood of the root r, then the Newton iteration converges quadratically if the initial guess is very good that is sufficiently close to the root. So this is a similar result for Newton iteration for a single equation. Let's take an example. We consider again this nonlinear system, which we did a fixed point iteration on. So um, the first equation is uh, quadratic in x and y, and the second one evolves a nonlinear term x times y. One may compute the Jacobian matrix for this f, which is the following. So differentiate this expression, partial derivative in x, give you 2x. And partial derivative in y here gives you 2y. 
and partial derivative in x give you y, partial derivative in y give you x. So it's rather simple. And you can check the determinant of this would be product this, so 2x squared minus 2y squared. Therefore, the determinant is non-zero when x squared is different from y squared. And that's the definition of the matrix being non-singular and invertible. So it's non-singular if the absolute value of x does not equal to the absolute value of y. We can code this in MATLAB, just a simple code, um, only written for this problem. Okay, so um, and we initialize, set up the initial guess, the tolerance, maximum number of iterations, account for steps, and the variable for arrows. Then we go into the iteration, so we evaluate the function f, which is a vector, and then we evaluate the Jacobian matrix, which we have the exact expression. And then we compute um, dv, um, that is the um, inverse of the Jacobian matrix, times the f. And then we update our x. So x will be x minus the first component here. And y is y minus the first component in the dv. And we increase the number of steps compute the arrow, that's the square of the Euclidean norm, and we display the result. Okay, And this is in the while loop, so when the arrow is less than the tolerance, or when the max number of iterations shall be reached, then this while loop will terminate. Now the code gives us the following result. So, first iteration, second iteration, third iteration, fourth iteration, and the x, y value, and the arrow. And we see that the arrow goes down very fast, and after four iterations is smaller than the tolerance, and we have convergence. So recall that with the fixed point iteration for this same problem, it took many, many more iterations and Newton's method converges much faster because we know it's a quadratic convergence. And let's look at global convergence. Here, unfortunately, we don't have good results. No global convergence result is available for Newton's method with any initial guess. And very often we know finding a good initial guess remains a real challenge. One possible remedy for this would be um, to adopt the continuous method, which we discussed at the end of chapter 5, that would assist you in locating a good initial guess. But that's expensive to compute as well. We now do a case study of uh, convergence of Newton iteration for a 2x2 two two system. As an example, we can consider a function in a complex domain. Take a function f of z, z is a complex value, to be z to the fourth minus 1. We know that we have four solutions for this problem where r1 is negative 1, r2 is 1, r3 is negative i, and r4 is i. One possibility will be um, write out z as x plus i, y, the real part and the imaginary part, and then you can um, rewrite this out in x and y, and you have a system of two nonlinear equations to solve for x and y. Another possibility, utilizing the fact that MATLAB can perform computations with complex number, we can set up Newton iterations directly using complex numbers. And this will take the form zk plus 1 is zk minus 
f at zk, which is this, and f prime at zk, which is this. So the questions we would like to explore is the following. For a given initial guess, which root does it converge to? Or you can ask in a reverse manner, that is, what initial guess would it converge to one specific root? We explore answers to this question through some numerical simulations. Here is a simple MATLAB script. Um, so let's look at it, go through some details. So we choose n equal 1000, m is 30, that's the number of iterations. And x is a space variable, it's from negative 1 to 1, and uh, taking 1,000 points, and we generate a mesh grid. So it's uh, a square from negative 1 to 1 for both x and y. And then we set up the complex number. At every point, it's set to be x plus an i times y. y will be the complex number. And we'll put that in Z. So this one can consider as a, a bunch of initial guesses, and we store them in Z. And then we perform the Newton iteration here. We do 30 steps, because m is 30. And that is just the Newton iteration. We perform the iterations, and then we store the values back into the Z. We use it over again. After 30 steps, if it converge, it might have converged. And then we um, plot the imaginary part and the real part um, in an image and to see what values are there now. Note that um, we um, rounded off the value, imaginary part value, and then we plus 1 to it and multiply by 30. So. Um, if the imaginary number value here shall be 1, then we'll have 1 plus 1 times 30. It will give you the value 60. So this manipulation is for, for the um, plot, so it gives a nice image. Okay, And the same thing happens to the real value. If it shall be 1 as a real value for the z, then we would get 60. And if it shall be 0, as for the real value, and then we would get 30. And if the real value is negative 1, we would have 0. So keep that in mind. And we let's look at what plots this generates. Now, here are the two plots. On the left is the plot of the image for the imaginary part of Z. And on the right is the real part. So let's look at the real one. It's the same for the analysis of the ima imaginary image. We see that this is a rather complex image. And uh, for the point um, here, let's say, consider that point, I have this area to be all yellow, and yellow is when it equals 60, that is, the real part of z equals 1 here. That's where it converges to. And you know that is the root here, 1, 0. So for what initial values of z does it converge to 1? And we see it's a very complex pattern. So nearby, it converges to that point 1. And also, and this part here, pretty far away, it also converges to 1. And then also here. And more interestingly, there are these little, little tiny areas. In fact, one can zoom in to this image, and this pattern actually repeats. Okay. And the same thing is for the convergence, say, for this point here. Imagine, imaginary part is 1, 
it was ye yellow, and the real part is zero when it's uh, here around um, 30. And also, extremely complex pattern. So, it's fair to conclude that this example demonstrates the complexity of the global convergence of Newton's method for nonlinear systems. We have the observation that the iteration does not always converge to the root that is closest to the initial gaps. So the basing of attraction of the root displays an extremely complex structure. In fact, they are called fractals. You can zoom in to specify region to see that it again demonstrates the same pattern. That's all for this topic and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.